Hey everyone and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be working on a day and night cycle for our game. Now, the thing about this day and night cycle is that it can just be drag and dropped into any project that you have, okay? It's not specific for this game that we're creating right here. Uh, you can just copy over the script as well as modifying a few things here in the inspector in order to have this working in pretty much any game you want. All right, so first things first is that we need to set up a few things here in the hierarchy. The first thing is our directional light. Okay, if we select our directional light here, this is what we are gonna be using as our sun. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to sun, like so. And as well as a sun, we also need a moon. Uh, we're not gonna be using the same directional light. Instead, we're gonna be copying this. So I'm gonna go Control D to duplicate the sun like so. And I'm gonna rename it to moon. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and disable the existing sun here, just so that we can work on the moon. Now with moonlight, uh, generally at nighttime, uh, the lighting is of course very dark, but there's also a bit of a blue tint, all right? And this can be an artistic style, uh, but we're gonna create our moonlight a bluish color. So I'm gonna make it a bluish color like so. As you can see, it already looks a bit darker, even though we haven't changed anything apart from the color. And along with this, I'm also going to bring down our shadow strength to be 0.5, just so the shadows are a bit weaker uh, during the night. Now that we have our moon, I'm going to disable that and enable our sun by default here. Now, if you don't have your lighting panel open, you can go over to window, you can go to rendering, and then lighting. And that's going to open up the lighting window right here. And we want to go over to the environment tab. Now in the environment tab, make sure that your sun source is set to that sunlight that we just renamed before, okay? It's very important as that is uh, what the sky box, if we look around, we have our sun right here in the sky. This is what is gonna be moving up and down and modifying uh, the colors of the sky box based on the sun's rotation. So in the inspector, if we select our sun right here uh, and we modify, let's just say the X value, You'll see that as I rotate the sun, you can see the direction with the blue arrow right here. Uh, you can see that the sky box is changing and when it gets to nighttime, so when the sun's facing upwards, uh, it turns dark. Now, this seems to be all right right now, uh, but the problem with this is there are still a bunch of things that we need to change, such as the intensity of the sky box, the reflection intensity, as well as also having our, mo our moon move as well. Now this uh, day and night cycle is gonna be very customizable and there'll be many different options that we can do to basically tweak it to how you'd like. So what we need to do now is I'm gonna go and create ourselves a brand new script right here. So I'm gonna create a C-sharp script called day night cycle. And I'm gonna create ourselves a new empty game object. I'm gonna call this game object right here, day night cycle. Let's just set the position to 000 to be consistent here. I'm gonna drag that script on like so and open it up inside of Visual Studio. We're first gonna create ourselves a public float variable for the time. Now this is going to be a number ranging from zero to one. Zero being uh, 12 in the morning and one being basically 11.59 at night and uh, 0 0.5 will be midday. So we can restrict this to a specific range by adding in the range attribute right here. We need to give it a minimum and a maximum, 0, 0.0 for the minimum and 1.0 for the maximum, okay? And in the inspector, there'll be a little slider that we can then slide back and forth to test this out. Next, we need to know, okay, how long is a full day going to be in terms of seconds? So we'll create a full day length uh, variable right there. We also need to know the start time. At what time, when we press play on the game, is the day going to be? Is it going to be at midnight? Is it going to be midday? This is where we'll define that. So public float, start time. And by default, we'll set to that to 0.4F. So that will be uh, sometime in the morning, late morning. Now, along with this, we also need to know our time rate. And this variable is just going to be there. We're going to be assigning this at the start of the game. And this is just going to be, okay, um, every frame, how much do we increment the time uh, forward? So this is going to be a private float time rate. 
Now, when it comes to rotating the sun and the moon around, uh, we are gonna rotate it based on the rotation when it is noon, okay? So here, I'm gonna create a public vector three and call that one noon. We'll be assigning this in the inspector, and this is just gonna be the rotation of the sun uh, when it is at noon. So basically, when the sun is facing uh, directly above the player, all right? Now, along with this, we also need settings specifically for our sun and for our moon. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna create a new header attribute, which is just going to give us a uh, bold header in the inspector, so this sort of stands out. I'm gonna call it sun, and inside of sun here, we need three variables. First of all, we need the sun light uh, component, that, so we can modify the brightness, modify the rotation and all that. Next, we are gonna create a gradient variable, so public gradient, and I'm gonna call this one sun color. Now, a gradient in Unity, it has a range between zero and one. And if we basically evaluate a, or if we sample a number, uh, we can basically get a specific color. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. We also want to do the same thing for the uh, sun intensity. So I'm gonna create a public a animation curve, and I'm gonna call this one sun intensity, okay? Now, this may not make a lot of sense uh, why we're using animations for defining sun intensity. Well, animation curves are a very powerful thing uh, when creating games in Unity, and they aren't just for animations. We can use it to basically sample a specific time to get a value. So let's save this right now, go back into the inspector, and have a look at what I mean. Okay, so here in our day-night cycle uh, script, once it loads up fully, what we're gonna do is set the time. Oh, we're not gonna modify the time, actually. Let's set the full day length to something such as, I will set to 30 for now, just so the days go pretty fast. We can drag in our sun here. Now for noon, this is going to be 90 on the X, zero on the Y, and zero on the Z. So if we select our sun here and enter in those specific values, there you go. The sun's looking directly down and it is noon. Okay, I'm just gonna set that back to the default there. So on our day-night cycle now, uh, we have our sun color and sun intensity. So what do, what do these mean? Well, sun color, if we select that, it's gonna open up the gradient editor. Now, you may have seen this before in Unity. Basically, at the bottom here, we can select a node, change this color to something, and select the other node here, and change that color to something else, and we now have a gradient transitioning between these two colors. We can also create more nodes by clicking and assigning those a different color like that. Uh, now, the way we're gonna be using it, is since our time is based on a zero to one scale, zero being uh, mi midnight and one being just before midnight, and 0 0.5 being midday, what we can do is go, okay, at midday, so it would be around 50% the way through this gradient, what color do we want to make the sun? And then let's just say, okay, it's early morning, so we're over here on the left-hand side, what color do we want to make the sun? and we can sample a specific color at a specific time along the gradient. So in the morning, we might want a more orange sun or making it a bit more uh, bright uh, during the day. And that is also what we're gonna do with the sun intensity. So the sun intensity, this is an animation curve. And at the bottom here, we can select one such as this here. And you see it creates a curve. And it ranges, if we look at the bottom, along the x-axis from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. And just like with the gradient, we are going to be basing the sun's intensity off the sample that we get from here. So let's just say it's midday, so 0 0.5. This means that the sun intensity is going to be around uh, 0 0.75, okay, based on this animation curve. So we can make the sun intensity be very low during the morning and very high during midday. So we can do something like this, okay? During the morning, it's low, but as it goes to more towards midday, the sun intensity gets brighter, and then it goes back down during night. And this is how we can accurately uh, define various things, such as the color and the intensity. So in the next lesson, we're gonna continue on with this and set up our sun settings, set up our moon settings, and our other lighting settings. So I'll see you all then. Welcome back, everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna be continuing on with our day-night cycle. So, between now and the last lesson, uh, I've actually gone ahead and set up our sun color, so it is this nice orange color uh, during the morning and evening, and it transitions to this much brighter color during midday.
okay? And for our sun intensity, I have it so it is uh, pretty much at zero during midnight, and as the day goes on, it gets brighter and brighter, and then it gets darker and darker as it becomes nighttime again. So let's open up our script here and continue on with setting up our variables specifically for the moon. Okay, we want to do pretty much the exact same thing here that we've done with our sun, but do it for the moon. So I'm going to enter in a moon header right here, and then we can create our variables. So just like before, we have a public light for the moon. Uh, we have a public gradient for the moon color, and we have a public animation curve uh, for the moon intensity. Okay. Uh, now, along with this, we also want to be able to modify some more specific settings, okay? And that is going to include the lighting intensity and the reflections intensity. So I'm going to save this script, return to Unity, and I'll show you what those two things are. So if we go over to our lighting window here, and under Environment tab, you'll see we have Intensity Multiplier right here. Now, with the Intensity Multiplier, we can increase that, and you'll see the scene gets brighter, okay? So it is uh, taking on more light from the skybox, and if we decrease that, it is taking on less, okay? So at night time, we're going to have this very low, and during the day, we're going to probably have it at about 1. Now, for the Reflections Intensity, this is very noticeable at night time, because uh, right now, if we are to make it night, you'll still see a lot of reflections from the blue skybox. So what we want to do is we'll be decreasing that intensity multiplier down so there are less reflections from our skybox, okay? So let's hop back into the script now and implement those two things. So I'm gonna create a header here and I'm gonna call this one other settings or other lighting actually. And then we can create the two animation curves, so public, animation curve and this is going to be lighting intensity uh, multiplier and then we want a public animation curve for the uh, reflections intensity multiplier and there we go okay so we've got all of our variables now uh, now what do we have to actually do at the start of the game well here's what we're going to do inside of the void start function we are going to first of all set the time rate. So the time rate is going to be equal to 1.0f divided by the full day length. Okay, so time rate is basically uh, how much time do we add to our time every second. So let's just say our full day length here is 10 seconds long, okay? So 10 seconds for a full day. So that means in order to get from 0 to 1, we would have to add 0.1 every second. So time rate would then be 0.1. Now along with time rate, we also need to set the time of the day uh, at the start. So time is going to be equal to start time. And that is it for the start function. Now the update function is where we are going to be updating all of the other things, okay? Updating the positions, updating the colors, updating the intensity. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to create the update function here, which gets called every frame. And inside of the update function, we first of all want to increment time. So we'll go increment time right here. And to do that, we're going to go time plus equals time rate multiplied by time dot delta time. So we are multiplying it uh, in a way so that we are adding time rate every second. And we then want to check, okay, if time is greater than or equal to one, then we want to set that back down to zero. So it basically loops around. So if time is greater than or equal to one, then we'll go time equals zero. So it's the start of a new day. Next, we want to basically be rotating uh, our sun and our moon. So here we're gonna go light rotation. And to do this, we are going to go sun.transform.eulerangles equals, now the little formula that I'm gonna write here is just gonna make it so that as our sun rotates around, the moon is going to be rotating around basically in the opposite direction. So if when our sun is, is uh, at the top of our world, the moon is going to be at the bottom, okay? And as those two rotate around, they are basically going to be in sync. So the sun's uh, Euler angles, or its rotation, is going to be in brackets here, time minus 0.25f multiplied by noon, so basically multiplied by the noon rotation, multiplied by 4. Okay, 
Uh, this just adds a little offset to it so that at midday, our sun is basically going to be shooting directly down and during the night, it is going to be rotating upwards. So we then want to do the same for the moon. So moon.transform.euler angles equals uh, time minus 0 0.75. So we have a bigger offset on that multiplied by noon multiplied by four. So that is going to be rotating our lights around. Uh, the next step is to be setting our sun and moon intensity. So here we'll go light intensity. And so how do we actually get the a value from an animation curve? Because animation curve isn't a variable that we can just set as a number or get as a number. We have to call it the evaluate function. So here we're going to go sun.intensity equals sun intensity dot evaluate. And evaluate, we need to give it a time. Now, time is basically uh, the x-axis. So if you, rem if you remember, uh, the x-axis on the animation curve is the one right at the bottom of the screen, and ours ranges from zero to one. We can evaluate a specific time, and that is gonna return us the value of the curve at that specific time. So in here, we're gonna just enter in time. And the same for the moon. We'll go moon.intensity equals moon intensity dot evaluate time. Now, before we continue, let's go back to our script. Oh, I mean, let's go back to the inspector and fill in the rest of our variables and test this out to see if it even works. So back inside of our inspector here, I'm gonna select the day night cycle and I'm gonna drag in our moon object right here. But we also need to set a moon color. So I've already got one right here, a little gradient. Uh, for the moon color, it doesn't really matter as the only time we're going to be seeing the moon is when it is very dark. So I'm just going to keep the moon at this uh, blue light right here. And for the moon intensity, I am going to make it look like this. Okay. And to add new key points, you can just double click to create a new key point like so. And this is what our moonlight is going to look like. So at midnight, it is going to be at 0 0.5 intensity because we don't want the moon to be too bright. Uh, it is night time after all, and the moon isn't going to be as bright as the sun. So 0 0.5 at midnight. By the time it gets uh, a third, around a third the way through the day, so this will be around uh, mid morning, it's going to be right down to zero. Okay, so the moon is no longer visible. And then towards uh, the end of the day, once it's starting to get dark, it will slowly rise up again back to 0 0.5. So that is going to be our moon intensity. Now let's press play and test it out. Make sure that you have set the full day length to something. Uh, I'm actually going to change this down a bit lower, maybe 15 seconds. Let's press play and see how it goes. So we are now, if you look at the right hand side, the time is ticking up. It's getting night time now, sunset, night, and the sun should be then coming back up around here any second now as it becomes day again. And there we go. The sun's rising, it's rising, and you can see the light of the sun is updating the shadows as it moves around. And as it gets night time, we now have the uh, moon shadow also appearing, which we can't really see because right now we aren't actually enabling or disabling the moon, which is something that we do need to do. So in the next lesson, we are going to be continuing on with our day night cycle here, setting up the ability for the moon and sun to be enabled or disabled based on the time of day, as well as setting up our other lighting settings here so we can have a much more fleshed out day night cycle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be continuing on with our day night cycle right here. In the previous lesson, we set up our sun and our moon so they are now rotating around in our world. So back inside of the script, what we're gonna be doing now is setting it up so that the colors are also gonna be changing as the days go on. Okay, so here we are going to be setting up the change colors. And to do this, it's gonna be very similar to how we set up the intensities here. So we're gonna go sun uh, dot color equals, and we are going to go sun color. Now sun color is a gradient and we can do the exact same evaluate function on that. So sun color dot evaluate time to get the specific color for that specific time of day. Same for moon, we'll go moon dot color equals moon color dot evaluate time like so. Okay, so we've got changing other colors. Now, how about setting it up so that we can actually enable or disable the sun and moon based on the time of day? Because we don't want the sun active when it's midnight as there are still some sort of lighting artifacts that can still shine through at the bottom of objects. So we want to get rid of that. 
So to do that, we are going to basically enable slash disable the sun. And for this, we need to check to see, okay, uh, if the sun intensity is zero and the sun is still active in the scene, disable it. Otherwise, if the sun intensity is above zero and the sun is disabled for some reason, re-enable it. Okay, so here we'll go. If sun.intensity equals equals zero and sun.gameObject.active in hierarchy. Active in hierarchy is either true or false for if the uh, object is enabled or disabled. So if that's the case, then we want to disable the sun because we no longer want it visible. So sun.gameObject dot set active, whoops, set active, false. Otherwise, so else if, uh, if the sun dot intensity is greater than zero and the sun is not active in the hierarchy, so exclamation mark sun dot game object dot active in hierarchy, then we want to go sun dot game object dot set active, true. Now, when it comes to doing the moon, we pretty much want to do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this code right here and set that up for the moon. So I'm just gonna replace moon for all of these variables right here. And there we go. So now our moon and our sun are going to be enabled and disabled uh, based on if their intensity is equal to zero or greater than zero. And we also have set up our colors here. So you know what, let's save the script return to Unity and test it out. So if I press play, we should see now that as the sun and the moon go around, they will enable and disable. So once it becomes night, the moon is gonna re-enable and here it is. And we also have the colors changing. You can see the moon shadow right here. Uh, as the moon goes down and it becomes daytime again, uh, it's pretty much working. So we have the day night cycle set up now but something doesn't look right. When it turns nighttime, we can still see the ocean clear as blue, uh, and it just doesn't look right, okay? We can still see the environment pretty much brightly lit. So how do we fix that? Well, that is where our lighting intensity multiplier and reflections intensity multiplier come in. Okay, so for these two things here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set the lighting intensity to something like this, where at midnight, it is pretty much zero, and then during the day, it rises up to one, stays at one for a bit and then goes down back to uh, zero at the end of the day. Okay, so during the day, we have the intensity multiply at one and at nighttime, it's pretty much zero. Now to get this flat uh, curve right here, you can just right click on a, a key point and go left or right tangent. So right tangent and set that to linear to basically be flat. Now we want to do the exact same for the reflections uh, intensity multiplier right here. So they're basically going to act in the same way. Okay, so back inside of our script now, let's implement that. So here we are going to create a little comment that just says lighting and reflections intensity. Okay, and to do this, we need to access the render settings. And to do that, we can go render settings dot ambient intensity, whoops, not ambient light, ambient intensity uh, equals and again, we are gonna evaluate the animation curve. So lighting intensity multiplier dot evaluate time. And the exact same for the reflections intensity. So render, whoops, render settings dot uh, reflection intensity equals reflections intensity multiplier dot evaluate time. And uh, modifying the ambient intensity or the lighting intensity and the reflections intensity is going to greatly change how uh, much we can specifically modify the day night cycle. So if you remember how it looked like before, it still will look kind of weird at night, but now nighttime should look a lot better. Okay, so as the sun rises, uh, it's over there, it's setting, and now nighttime looks a lot more dark, all right? The ocean is a lot darker, the moon in the sky, it's a bit hard to see. And there we go, the sun rises up again, and that is our day-night cycle complete. You can of course go through and modify all of these various different settings. It's set up in a way so that you can tweak it just how you like. Uh, you can modify the full day length, so maybe we want, we want to make this uh, a much longer day. So let's just say a day is going to be two minutes, so enter in 120 seconds right there. Press play, and the sun is moving a lot slower now. Okay, so you can tweak this as much as you like, 
we can maybe start the day, uh, let's just say we want to start the day early in the morning, so we'll set that to 0 0.2, and we're going to start the day when it is still nighttime, just as the sun is about to rise. So that is our day-night cycle for our game complete. Again, you can use this in any project that you wish. Uh, pretty much all you need is the sun and the moon uh, objects here set up correctly, and the day-night cycle script. Just drag and drop it into your project, assign all these properties, and you're good to go. So thank you for watching.